So I got an email a couple weeks ago from a guy who unfortunately cannot use his right hand due to a stroke, but he had seen uh, my other video where I made an Arduino game controller and was interested in creating something similar, but um, sort of a mouse with some peripheral controls like an analog stick and some buttons so that he might be able to play games um, with one hand. And I thought this was really interesting, something worth creating, might help a lot of people. So today we're going to be creating sort of a mouse accessory that can help you play games with only one hand. Um, he sent me some interesting photos. I'm not sure whether he created these or they are someone else's renderings, but they are very good looking. Anyways, uh, it sort of depicts a gaming mouse with some extra buttons and analog sticks. I think this is a good starting point, but I have some ideas on how to actually achieve this with Arduino. I think it makes sense just to start with a regular mouse and then build on top of it some sort of Arduino peripheral control system. Um, so let's say we have a, like an analog stick poking out of the side um, for WASD, which you could control with your thumb. And then I'm thinking that your other fingers would be somewhere around here because you have your index finger here and your middle finger here. And then you have ring and pinky fingers, so you could have maybe some button, extra buttons here. So I think what I will do is have some sort of 3D printed stuff. And then, um, so we'll have our analog stick here, um, some buttons here maybe, and then we'll have our Arduino here. And we can have the cables wrap around the back. And this will have to have a separate cable, so the mouse cable and that cable as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and build this with one hand. I'll probably time lapse this. Might take a while. Okay, so getting the analog stick on was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I feel like that's probably the hardest part. Um, but yeah, it's just the little screws. I was able to do that with one hand. This is the uh, breadboard, which will connect all our electronics. Um, this makes things a lot easier. There we go. A little sticky backing to keep it on there. And then this is our uh, board. I don't remember whether it came with the pins soldered on, but those would need to be soldered on. So there you go, we'll just press that into the breadboard. And so we're going to get need all these jumper cables to connect everything. So there's a bunch of pins on the uh, analog stick. I'll explain a little bit more about the analog stick later when we do the coding. But we're going to connect those to certain pins on the Arduino. The x-axis. I'm going to connect to, um, you have to connect it to an analog pin, I'm going to connect it to the analog 0, and the y axis I'm going to connect to analog 1. The stick needs power, so our 5 volts are going to come from VCC I think, yep, right there. We need a ground, which is our gray wire. 
that goes to the ground of the Arduino. Also, if you press down on the analog stick, it's like a button. So that also needs a pin, and it will go to a digital pin. So I'm going to put that at digital pin 9. And here's our mouse. So you can see, you can control the mouse, and you can control the analog stick with your thumb, and then we're going to put some buttons up here. Okay, so now we've attached this analog stick, which is super cool, but we're also going to need some buttons. And I have these little 6mm by 6mm push buttons. I have two terminals. One needs to be connected to ground and the other to a digital pin. And um, that creates a circuit, and the Arduino can just check to see whenever the circuit is uh, open or closed to see whether the button is pressed up or down. My original plan was to just straight connect each button um, to the jumper cables, but they're very loose, so instead I can use this. The little uh, metal pins off the buttons can go in these sockets, and then I can screw that closed, screw the whole socket closed so that the buttons are solidly in there, and then attach the jumpers to these pins on the back. Um, this might be kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do it, so bear with me. So I've actually plugged it into the breadboard just so it's secure, so that I can um, screw it in here, and then I'll unplug it when I'm done. Now we've connected our two buttons to this terminal system. The middle pin is shared between the two buttons, so we're going to use that as a ground. We'll just plug a black wire in there, and then um, uh, different separately colored wires on the other two pins. Those are individual pins uh, not shared by each button. Sort of cumbersome to do this with one hand, but here we go. And I was hoping that there would be a little bit more space so that we could fit some more buttons. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. This kind of takes up a lot of space. We're just going to have these two buttons here, and ground will plug in to ground here. And these other two will plug in to digital pins. Eight and seven. So there we go. The whole wiring system is done. I'll, I'll throw up a little wiring diagram just to help out. I know that my head got in the way a little bit with the uh, <laughs> other stuff and it might not be super clear, so I'll go ahead and throw up a little diagram and then we can get into coding. All right, so I've written the code for the controller. Um, we're just gonna go through it line by line and I'm going to explain what the lines of code are doing um, and then talk a little bit about the hardware and how it's using this software to communicate with the PC. And um, yeah, we're just going to take it easy. Right up here, we're just including the joystick library that allows the Arduino to communicate with the uh, computer. There's instructions on how to download that in my last video, and I'll also put a link to it in the description of this one. Up here, we're creating values for the x-axis and the y-axis of the analog stick. And um, at this point, I guess I'll explain the analog stick, the way that the Arduino knows where what position the analog stick is in is because the analog stick is made of two potentiometers on sort of like a gimbal system. For any given position, there's an X and a Y cord on it that the potentiometer gets. And it sends that data to the Arduino through the analog ports. So we're creating an integer for that value so the Arduino knows where the stick is. In setup, we're just saying start the joystick system and digital pins 9, 8, and 7 are for our buttons. Um, this is the way we set up for our buttons. Okay, so void loop is where all the business happens, but first, before we get into it, I should disclose that the way we oriented the physical analog stick on the controller is a little unnatural. We basically rotated it 90 degrees from what it would be, what its axes would be normally. So ultimately, that just means we have to flip-flop, swap the X and Y axis. So, for example, here, in uh, X axis equals analog read A1, we plugged what was labeled on the joystick, uh, x-axis into analog zero, but we just had to flip-flop it um, because of the way we oriented the analog stick. Ultimately, I had to uh, invert the y-axis as well. But yeah, if you put this uh, this code into the same wiring that I showed a couple minutes earlier, everything should run fine. So now that we have all that business out of the way, we can get into what these lines are actually doing. So this line is just saying that the integer we've created to represent the x-axis is equal to the information that's actually coming in through the analog pin one. Here we're mapping that value, uh, we're con sort of condensing it down to a zero to 255 range that the PC 
uh, uses. And here we're saying that the joystick x-axis is equal to the integer for our x-axis. Pretty much same thing for the y-axis, except that we're using analog pin zero, and we actually have, in the mapping process, uh, have to invert the values so you know it goes to low and it goes to low. Instead of um, low to low and high to high. And then the buttons are uh, super chill. It's just uh, an if statement, basically saying that if the, the digital pin is low, the button is pressed, and uh, otherwise it's not pressed. So I did record time lapse of the CAD for uh, this top plate of the controller, but honestly, the thing is getting kind of long, so I think I'll just uh, show the printing and then we'll get into finishing this up and testing it. So we're just going to plug this in. Looks kind of cool with the light and everything. And um, first thing we're going to do is go type uh, set up, there we go, set up USB game controllers. And it should pop up as Arduino Leonardo. And there we go. So if everything is configured correctly. Um, the axis should move accordingly and then let's see we'll press down there's button one button three and button two and yeah there we go so we're just gonna put our mouse in there and yeah basically we have a little one-handed mouse controller and okay everything's good one program I like to use that makes everything super easy is Joytiki. Uh, previously, I was just relying on, um, you know, games to have embedded controller support, but this actually maps um, all the controls to specific key bindings. So I have WASD, and then I can press. Um, this is not. There we go. Shift button one is shift. Um, here is button 3, that's our jump button, and then 2 can be C for crouch. And um, we'll have our scroll wheel to change weapons and click and, you know, all the classic controls. But, um, so you might notice there's a little bit of mouse drift with this. Um, and then, so full disclosure, this mouse works pretty good um, with this. However, I did try another mouse, and it was super jittery and pretty much unusable. So in addition to making right-hand, left-hand versions of this, I'll also make one that doesn't have this base, um, so that the mouse can make full contact with the surface of the desk or mouse pad or whatever. But um, this one is pretty decent, um, so I'm not going to worry about that, but I will make sure in my Thingiverse page, where I'll post all these 3D models, for you guys to print um, that there are options for those kinds of mice that don't work so well. Okay, so we just have Siege pulled up here and um, we're gonna give it a shot as we go forwards, our character goes forwards, backwards, le uh, right, left, WASD classic movement. We can also sprint if we press down and aim down sights, classic you know shooter mechanics. Um, we can also, um, vault with um, one of our buttons and crouch. And, you know, obviously Siege is a pretty complex game, so um, there's not enough key bindings to do everything, but we can still do it, get a lot done. And um, in, a, you know, a game like Minecraft or something a little bit less complex, you would definitely have enough key bindings. 